again, it's been 10 minutes. So thank you for hanging with us. I am Brianna. I'm going to stay off camera just so we can hopefully get this going. Um, I'm not able to see video on my end. Um, so again, bear with us as we do this. And I know that y'all can't see me. Um, thank you. So Tony, why don't you go ahead and get us started with introducing yourself? Thank you again for being so gracious and hanging out while we try to get this figured out. Um, Tony, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Brianna. Um, hi, everyone. So I am Tony Ugarte, as you may know, um, but I am the manager of the customer service department at the Society of Actuaries. Um, I've been doing that for about four years, but I've actually been a part of the Society of Actuaries family for 10 years. Um, so I started just as a customer service representative. And then I did do some work with our education department. I worked on the e-learning team when it came to grading modules and assessments for a few years. And then I did move um, right during COVID over to the management position in customer service. So that's what I do here. Um, so yeah, we manage our, I manage that department. Um, and what we do is we try to guide our candidates members in the right ways um, through their pathway through the SOA. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what questions you guys have for me. Thank you so much, Tony. And I know we've had some folks um, putting in the Q&A. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. I was getting weird feedback on my end. So um, if folks want to put their questions in the Q&A box, I know I haven't made that announcement yet. You can go ahead and do that and we will get started. Um any, you know, this is an open topic today. You have someone from customer service here. So any questions you have, um, Tony, why don't you get us started with sharing some of the most frequently inquiried about um, questions or concerns or comments that y'all get in customer service? Yeah, definitely. So a lot of our first time candidates, um, when they're coming to us, one of the big questions we always get are, how many uh, hours should I commit to studying for these exams? So um, obviously it can be different depending on your knowledge, what you already know, what maybe you've learned in school, but um, typically we would let candidates know to allow at least 100 hours uh, per exam hour to study for those exams. Um, like I said, depending on your knowledge. Um, another question we get is um, how do I start? Where do I begin? Um, I've just come across this program and I'm very intrigued to learn more. Um, so obviously, a lot of you have joined the affiliate membership program, which is a great place to start. Um, there's so many different tools in the affiliate membership program, such as the networking, the mentorship, the other um, uh, podcasts that they have, these types of situations, the Ask an Actuary. So that's a great way to start to learn more about being an actuary in general. Um, and as far as it goes to get started in the pathway, we do have on our website, which is a great resource for lots of information, but we have our educational pathway. Um, that is a great place to start to look to see what those first couple of exams are that you should probably start with, find more information about that, and then take it from there as you will in your journey. Um, another question we do get a lot in customer service for candidates that have been in the pathway, are what do I need still to obtain my designation? So what will happen is um, we do go through curriculum changes over a few years. Um, this happens every now and then. And so in customer service, we help to provide those answers. So what were you taking and what would you still need in the pathway? So we help with conversion credit, um, things like that. So that is some other questions we get in customer service too. Um, otherwise, you know, sometimes we also get questions about how long would it take to get my designation? Again, this is going to be really dependent on the person, uh, where they are, maybe family commitments, what they already know. But typically from our education department, we've been told that it can take about five years for an, to get an ASA, um, and then about eight years to get your FSA. Um, so that's, those are some common questions we get. Um, in customer service. Thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate that. I'm sure everyone else here appreciates that as well. Um, folks, um, again, I'm getting some messages. I think that the chat function's not working, but the Q&A box should be working. So if, I'm not sure why the chat function is not working, but if you do need to 
get my attention or Tony's attention, go ahead and put that in the Q&A box. Um, Tony, we do have our first question in the Q&A box. Um, how do we work through VEEs and should I work through those by myself or should I wait until I get my first position? Yeah, sure. So to bring some background about VEEs, that's the validation by educational experience. So those are going to be courses that you previously took or took at a university or maybe an alternate option that you will use to apply for VEEs. Now, you can't apply for VEEs right away until you pass two preliminary exams. Um, so I would say it would be encouraged somebody to be taking those courses while they're pursuing the exam. Um, but it is something that you do need to wait to apply for until you do pass two exams. Um, so I wouldn't say it's really about getting your first position per se. Um, it's really about passing those first two classes or those two courses, uh, preliminary exams, I'm sorry, and then pursuing that. So it could be something that you are working on while you're also studying and passing those first two exams. I hope that helps. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yes, that was uh, very helpful. And uh, Lewis, I hope that that answered your question. Um, folks, I know, again, it's been slow going and folks are still coming in. So if anyone has any questions for Tony, go ahead and put those in the Q&A box and we will get to them. Um, Tony, I know you've mentioned, you know, the most like the frequent, the most frequently asked questions or concerns that you get. Have there been any interesting inquiries you've gotten or things that you wouldn't have thought that folks might question or ask the SOA about? Um, you know, it's really in customer service. When people, our candidates are contacting us, they're contacting us for a really specific purpose or a reason. So they've done their research and they're just looking for more. So I can't say I've really gotten something out of the blue um, in customer service other than maybe like questions about a research topic that maybe we just don't have those specific answers to. Um, but it's really just run of the mill pathway questions. Um, you know, how I'm getting started, really about scheduling exams, I would say too, that's one that I didn't really get into, how they schedule the exams, um, but really nothing um, out of the ordinary per se. Uh, our candidates are pretty on spot with what they're looking to get from the SOA. So I give that credit to the SOA site too, um, directing people the right places. Yes, thank you so much. I'm glad that our website is helpful for folks. I know it's Certainly how I find most of my information about the SOA as well. Okay, I see everyone's just typing up their questions. They're all coming in hot now. Okay, yep. so Tony, can you describe at the um, some of the FSA, some, I'm so sorry, some of the changes to the FSA at the highest level? Um, they asked specifically about what is being eliminated and what is being introduced. For example, are all the modules being restructured? I know we're still about a year out from that launch. So if there is any high level um Anything common that you can answer about that? That would be very helpful. Yeah. So unfortunately, those details are still in the work. So this is a really important project that our education committee and our education department are working on. So they're taking a lot of time to iron out all of these details. So unfortunately, I don't have any extra details about high level what's changing, but I do know that that team and those committees are working to ensure that there are going to be transitions or conversion credits from whoever has credit in the current pathway to the new pathway. Um, so I would stay tuned. Um, I believe more information should be coming out in spring this year about those conversions. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go to the second question if you're looking at those, Tony, because it's about VEE and we already had a question about those. So sure. to touch on the VEE requirements, if we are no longer in university, then what is the best way to get credit for those? Yeah, so there is actually on our website in the VEE directory, um, I will refer a lot to the website just because we do have a lot of information out there. Um, and sometimes it's just you got to find where to go. But on our VEE webpage, we actually have a directory of, a, of approved courses as well as alternate options. So there are other options such as um, there's ACTEX learning, there is the certified, the CFA Institute, I believe is another 
program. So there are other programs that you can use that are in that directory. And I would say it's really, again, going to be dependent on the person, maybe where they're located. Um, if there's an online program they can take, but that directory already has those approved alternate courses. So you will know what would apply and be approved for your current VEEs if you do go that route. Thank you so much. All right, our next question um, is a very common one. And I should have, again, I was frazzled at the beginning. So I usually start this, I ask our, uh, the first question I ask all of our actuaries when they are in here is if they've ever failed an exam. So I'm not surprised that we have this question about failing a preliminary exam. So if you have failed a prelim, how can a student know which topics they need to put more effort while studying to redo that exam? So the information that I can provide for this is that for our first two preliminary exams, PNFM, they do have an instant pass-fail diagnostic representation that if you failed, it gives you a little bit of feedback about how you could do better on your next attempt. Otherwise, there's no additional feedback that is provided. Um, it's just that you get your results on your transcript for that preliminary result in approximately eight weeks. Um, so unfortunately, when it comes to the SOA, there's no additional feedback that we would be providing to get you to that next level. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Tony, as a follow-up to that, are there any specific places that folks can go um, to maybe see, like, are there any like past exams that folks can study on so that they can get an idea for what might be on exams if they're not getting that feedback? So some of our exams do, but our preliminary exams, there aren't those past exams out there, um, unfortunately. So um, the PNFM, they do have a the syllabus out there that will provide you, with all the exams, there's the syllabus that will provide you what will be based on or tested on that topic. But otherwise, there's not past exams that are posted for those preliminary exams. All right. Thank you so much. Um, our next question, will preliminary multiple choice exams that aren't instant results yet be instant in the near future, like uh, SRM and FAM specifically? Sure. Um, FAM is newer, uh, relatively newer, as opposed to SRM. SRM has been around for a few years. Um, FAM, I would say it's going to be a couple more years until we see any of those instant results coming out, which this is derived from our education department. Um, but for SRM, from what we've been hearing in the uh, customer service team from education, within the next couple of years, SRM will be having instant results. Um, so nothing specified that we've heard from that education department, but SRM is getting closer to those preliminary instant results. Um, FAM, I would allow a couple of years. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so our next question is specifically about how to get feedback on FMRP. And I know you've mentioned this already. Um, do you have, I have possible, a, a potential, uh, uh, oh my gosh, I'm losing my words today. Uh, I'm going to ignore what I just said. Tony, <laughs> if you have anything specific on thinking about feedback on FMRP, you can share that. Otherwise I have an answer. It's just I need to formulate it first. <laughs> yeah, really, from our perspective in customer service, um, it really has been for PNFM. It's only when you, if you fail that exam, you will get that email regarding your results. And it's just that diagnostic representation. It's just a really quick breakdown analysis of your strengths and weaknesses. Um, otherwise, it, we don't provide any additional feedback other than that. It's just the grade you receive afterwards. Unless, Brianna, you can bring yes. something more to my eyes. Yes. So um, this is not about getting specific feedback, but I did just drop a link for coaching actuaries in the chat. And this is not, coaching actuaries is not associated with the SOA, but we hear from a lot of our candidates that they're using them um, to study for exams. So while this won't get you feedback, you might be able to work with coaching actuaries. Um, I'm not sure exactly of their intake policies, but I would assume that you would do, you know, a practice exam with them, and then they could go over what you are um, not performing as well as some of the areas. So that might be one option um, in thinking about how to get feedback, not directly from the exam. Um, I hope that is helpful for folks. 
Great. If we have any other questions, folks can put those um, in here. Tony, is there something you were expecting to be asked about, but you weren't that you would like to share about? If not, that's totally fine. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was just excited to have this opportunity to talk to some of our candidates today. I was, you know, expecting kind of, you know, the typical results kind of questions, but um, nothing in particular that hasn't really been answered um, or has been, been asked yet. So um, I really appreciate everybody ans asking these questions and I hope I'm providing and the right relevant answers to you. So <laughs> thank you. All right. Perfect timing. We just got another question and thank you all so much. Oh, we got a bunch of them. Yes. Keep them coming, y'all. All right. So our next question is on my exam transition to the new ASA requirements, I was able or I was I'm sorry, I was told to take both PA and ATPA. Could you briefly go over these exams and what the differences are and the best study materials for them? Okay, sure. So for the predictive analytics exam, so that is the so I will explain this from customer services knowledge. Um, of these two topics. So the predictive analytics exam is um, an exam, it's an assessment that you will do where you will have modules in advance and then you will have to go to a parametric testing center to complete those answers. So those are written based answers. The ATPA is a different um, where it is in as modules as well, but then you will be downloading assessment that you have to submit in a certain time frame that you can do from your home. So as far as topics, I don't have those details. I would say the best idea to do that is to look at the syllabus um, for each of those. So the objectives in the ATPA, which is on that website, and the syllabus for the predictive analytics exam to determine those differences. But I can at least tell you from an exam administrative point what those differences are as what you'll be um, taking per se. So they both will have modules. The predictive analytics exam will be at um, a testing center for Prometric. Your ATPA assessment will be at home um, and you have to download and submit within a certain time frame. So that's that's the extent that I can answer that question. For bus study materials, I would say too, is look at those syllabus. For the ATPA, that is embedded. So you're going to get module material to then prepare for that assessment within that product. Um, for the predictive analytics exam, you will have supplemental models that modules that you'll be able to look at. There may be other um, resources within the syllabus that you might have to look for as well. But those syllabus, the syllabus is really going to tell you the types of books you need to look at and if there are any specific chapters you would need to read as well. Um, so I hope that helps. Thank you so much. And I know I mentioned coaching actuaries earlier, but <clears throat> that is again, another um, great resources or another great resource that a lot of our candidates tell us that they utilize. So I would also recommend looking into them. Okay. Our next question is how long does the UEC credit take to show up on the transcript and how sure. does it show up on the transcript? Yeah, sure. So the way it works is you're going to go through that approval process and then you will receive an email from the SOA stating, great, you've been approved. Please go online to make payment because you do still pay for whatever that exam fee is. After making that payment, it typically can take up to 30 days to see that post to your transcript. Um, it really is going to depend on whenever they run that. So it is a different area. If you're not seeing that, so if it's been 30, 40 days and you're not seeing that that transcript has been updated yet, you can reach out to customer service directly, or you can even reach out to UEC, which is just UEC at SOA.org to get a status update on that. Um, and the, the credit's going to show just as it would a diff, just another exam. So if you got UEC credit for exam FM, you will see exam FM credit. Um, in addition, the grade will um, not be a grade from zero to 10 like you're typically going to see. It's going to be a grade of 11. Um, and what grade of 11 means is that you've earned that through a different type of um, scenario. So that could be like a transition credit um, or um, just like this, you applied for UEC. So you'll see that as a regular exam with a grade of 11 once that does post. Thank you so much. Um, our next question is about the mentee program. I know that is one of the programs that I work on a lot. Um, so I'm happy to answer that. But Tony, do you have anything about the mentee program that you typically talk about with customer service? Sure. Um, 
all we really, I would love for you to talk about that program, Brianna, because I would like to learn more. It is a newer program. So we are just telling our candidates, like if they're having, um, you know, if they're looking for specific questions to get answered, maybe even looking for connecting with an actuary, maybe if they're transitioning from one job and now they're looking to become an actuary, that's where we usually, a customer service would say, join the mentorship program to see if you can get some answers. But Brianna, please feel free to take it from here. Yes, absolutely. So, and that was a great, and yes, this is a new, um, a relatively new program. It's been less than three years, if I'm doing math correctly. Um, so thank you, Tony, for that. So I just dropped a link to our affiliate membership, which everyone here may not have heard of, um, as this program is not part of the affiliate membership. This is just an open program, but the affiliate membership is a free program that candidates, and not just candidates, but folks interested in becoming actuaries can join. And there are a lot of really great um, free benefits on there. And one of those is our mentor link program, where you can either set up a flash mentoring, which is like a 30 minute one on one session with the practicing actuary, or a longer six month um, relationship with a mentee a mentor, who again is a practicing actuary who has opted in to be a mentor. So these folks are really excited to talk to candidates or again, people who have not even taken exams yet to share their experience as an actuary, to give, you know, personal advice, as well as, um, again, like Tony said, if folks are transitioning jobs or if they're a high school student and they don't know, you know, how to study to become an actuary, that is what the mentorship program is really good for. And you can access that. Like I said, it's completely free for our affiliate members. You can um, click the link that I dropped in the chat and you should be able to access that pretty easily through there. Okay, Tony, um, how do ASA modules work? <laughs> this person has only ever taken exams and was wondering how the slides work, how the assessment works, how it's graded and how long we should expect it to take. Okay, sure. So there are three different sets of modules um, in this current pathway. So we have our pre-actuarial foundations module, we have our actuarial science foundations module, and then we have our FAT modules. So the pre-actuarial foundations module and the actuarial science foundations module are both accessible for uh, 24 months once you purchase that. And what that means is once you purchase, there's going to be a new site that you're going to be getting access to, which is our learning, our e-learning website. And the way it works for those modules is you would log into that e-learning site and it's going to be um, a couple of different categories that you'll go through. So it's going to be the module content that you'll go through to complete. So that'll be the learning objective. So that's where you're going to be learning about what you're supposed to be tested on after. So once you go through that module content, usually there's an end of module test. Um, that test is usually a multiple choice test that candidates have to get at least 80% on. It's right on demand. So after you complete the content, you go to the test and you can start taking that test. In order to unlock the assessment, you have to get at least 80% on that test. Once you do get 80% on that test, it unlocks that assessment. Now, the assessments work that you download that assessment. It's gonna be a couple of questions usually. Once you download it, you have 96 hours to submit that assessment uh, back for grading. That is again for the pre-actuarial foundations module and actuarial science foundations module. Um, once that's submitted, grading can vary, but typically it could take about six weeks to receive your results after. Um, if you were to not pass that, you do have to retake that assessment again, which is an additional fee for the uh, retake of the assessment. Uh, the FAT modules, there is more content. So you'll actually do uh, more module assessments within the FAT modules. In addition, you'll have a final assessment that you'll have to complete. So the FAT modules are more extensive where there is more content. There are also interactive scenarios in the um, FAT modules, which means you will almost like a book, choose your journey. So you would have to go through the correct scenario, unlock the test, and then move on to the assessment. So only until you pass or achieve a high score is when the next thing unlocks for you to then complete. Um, that also has a final assessment and the final assessment has a grading schedule, which I would definitely look on the site. 
But if you're just new in the pathway, that's going to be further down. So uh, really, we suggest candidates take pre-actuarial foundations module, then actuarial science foundations, and then the FAT modules. Lots of information. I hope that helped. Thank you so much. And I was just going to say this will be recorded and posted <laughs> on our affiliate member um, YouTube playlist later. So if anyone does need to hear that information again, you can go back there. Those are those videos are usually posted uh, the same week. Um, so thank you so much for that very comprehensive answer. I would not have been able to share that. Um, we have a really quick question. Can I be a mentee if I'm an affiliate member, but not from the USA or Canada? Yes, you absolutely can be. Um, sorry, Tony, I just took that one myself. But yes, you absolutely can be. Okay, so this next question, Tony, I'm not sure if this is a customer service type question or not. And I know you can read the q and I'm not sure if you're looking at it or not. Um, but what efforts are being made to keep costs down for the administration of the exams? Sure. Um, that is not in our realm of customer service. I would say that's more handled by our education department. So um, unfortunately, I don't have feedback to provide on that question. I'm sorry. Great. Thank you so much. Um, our next question is for multiple choice questions. If you use the scratch paper halfway and completed the question in the calculator, once you had your formula ready, does that affect in marking? Uh, that is a question I'm not sure how to answer for my understanding. So for the multiple choice questions, those questions are submitted on the computer. Um, so I'm not sure, to be honest, with the calculator situation um, and you had the formula, I'm not sure exactly. I would say maybe if you're having an issue, maybe to reach out to our education department. But um, as far as my understanding is, those questions when you're at the multiple choice center, they're being submitted on the computer for grading. And this was an anonymous question. So um, if you have follow-up information to help us answer this question, because I'm also not, I'm with Tony on this. Um, if you have more information, we're happy to answer, but we're just not sure if we're understanding it correctly. Um, so I'll wait for that if there's further clarification. Otherwise, there are no other questions in here currently. Um, we'll give it another minute or so just to see if this person or if anyone else, if you have any more questions, please feel free to put those in here. Um, I want to thank everyone again for bearing with us as we dealt with the technical difficulties and my disembodied voice that you're hearing with no video. I apologize. Um, and yeah, we'll just give it one more minute and then we will probably head out, which is okay. Um, Tony, thank you so much again. I know we're still waiting, but this was wonderful. Thank you for being so gracious with your time as well as bearing with us. Um, we did just get another question, not the one answering the previous question, but this person is wondering, can they practice actuarial science in Australia if they've cleared exams from the SOA? So as far as from our understanding at the SOA, I see no issue with that, but that might be something that you would want to really talk to an employer about to see if maybe they have certain regulations. Maybe there are certain exams uh, in Australia that they would rather you take. Um, we haven't heard of any like restrictions in that sense, but we do have candidates that are in Australia that do take SOA exams. Um, so hopefully that's helpful, but I would say maybe look at employer requirements, what they're looking, if you're looking for like a specific job, uh, what typically they're looking. Uh, we have on our website um, a job center which uh, for candidates and members, which I think might be helpful too. So where you can actually see in your area what type of postings are there and what type of requirements they're looking for. So that can maybe give you some more insight to that question. And my computer's being very slow, but I am going to, as soon as that website loads, I'll drop that link in the chat as well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. Um, let me find the chat. All right, there is that for the job center. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions or follow up for the other questions. So I'm going to go ahead and say, Tony, thank you so much. We're going to call this one a bit early. Um, and again, thank you so much everyone for 
bearing with us with the technical difficulties. We have another one of these coming up in a month. Exactly. I think it's January 16th. Um, I'm sorry. Today is January 16th. I believe it's February. It's February 15th, actually. So almost a month. Um, we'll be talking to someone who's a career changer. So if that is of interest to you, please come out. And again, thank you all so much. Tony, again, thank you so much. And we will see everyone soon. Thanks all. Thanks, everyone. Bye.